The Elden Ring DLC will be coming out this summer, and everyone is already saying this will be the best part of Elden Ring. I believe this too, and for good reason. From Software has a history of the best parts of their games being their DLC areas. In this video, I want to break down why that is, or at least give my thoughts on why that may be. The first component I believe that always leads to DLCs being better is the amount of focus on the project. What do I mean by this? DLCs are obviously a lot smaller in scale compared to the base games, especially a game like the Elden Ring, and this allows the developers to put a great amount of time into even the smallest of things. One of the main critiques of Elden Ring's base game is caused by the size of the world. It is such a big game that needs to fill up so much space that they are required to repeat bosses, leave big open spaces, and basically just put filler in certain areas. Playing this game multiple times reveals this. A lot of the world you just skip over because they don't hold much importance. Obviously, I wouldn't say they don't put time into these areas, whether it be caves or dungeons, but I would think it is fair to say they might not put as much time into these areas compared to the more important areas. In terms of enemy placement and items, the DLC being reduced in scale will hopefully lessen these issues. I assume there will be little to no empty space, and I would also assume the enemies placed will be a lot more deliberate. Instead of looking for space to fill, they will make space for the things they add to be put. In essence, quality over quantity. This leads me to my next point. Because the developers are working with a much smaller area, this means the DLC will be filled with so much more substance compared to the base game. By substance, I mean unique encounters that provide much more meaningful experiences to the player. This has happened in almost every Souls DLC. Let's look at Bloodborne. Yes, Bloodborne had different bosses throughout the main game, but some of them weren't so unique. Four of the main bosses were variations of beasts, and four other bosses were more of a stage hazard survival test than an actual boss. When looking at the DLC bosses, four, or three if you say Lawrence is another beast ripoff, which I understand, out of the five bosses, are unique and memorable. A higher percent of the material in the DLC is more memorable and exciting. Yes, it is smaller in size compared to the main game, and obviously the Elden Ring DLC will be too. But that means a higher percentage of the content will be better. This smaller size will also give them a chance to truly create a solid open world arena for the player to explore. I would argue that the open world in the base game of Elden Ring is more just the pathway to its smaller caves and dungeons. This isn't the worst thing in the world, again Elden Ring is one of the greatest games of all time, but I'm hopeful this new area will have menacing and immovable obstacles the player is almost forced to interact with instead of just run by. They have already claimed that the size of the new DLC area will be about the size of Limgrave, and giant enemies like the Burning Man give me hope that you will be encouraged to interact with the open world enemies instead of just avoiding them to get to the meat and potatoes of the area. And we have already seen that each of the bosses and the locations look fun and interesting, full of vibrancy. Making a more grasping open world is a hard obstacle to overcome, and not even I have answers to this. The only thing I could think to compare it to is Hollow Knight, where certain areas lock you in to fight enemies, or replace traditional enemies with different challenges, like platforming. Clearly Hollow Knight can do this much easier, as it is a platforming style game. I think one thing that could have made the open world have much more interactivity is making the paintings more accessible. If they made it more available to the player, with perhaps a compendium, instead of hiding them around the map, the player could always have something to keep an eye out for. If they had more paintings with greater rewards, such as unique weapons, or even large bundles of runes to help the player level up, it would add more substance to the open world to both new and returning players. If you guys have any ideas on how to add some more interactivity with the open world, leave a comment down below. I am interested in what you guys have to say. With all that said, I am hopeful that this new area will be more grasping to the player and have more important moments in its open world, but whatever happens, this will surely be the pinnacle of Elden Ring, and I can't wait to play it. Though, it is important to note that even if there are some places in the main Elden Ring game that are lacking a little bit, without those areas and without the larger scale of the game, this DLC would not have anywhere to fit in. It would not be able to be fathered in with such anticipation. The main game was needed with all of its quirks, so that the DLC can shine. Except for Limgrave, that shit boring as hell. Thank you guys for watching. If you want more Elden Ring content, click on one of these videos. Also make sure to like and subscribe so I show up in your feed. I make Elden Ring videos every week, and stream every Thursday to Sunday on Twitch. I have a longer region log video hopefully coming out next week, so be on the lookout for that. Brody Z out.